Hello, and welcome to our series on acute stroke and perfusion imaging. I'm Dr. Benjamin Strong, the Chief Medical Officer of VRAD, or Virtual Radiologic. This series will be in three parts. The first will be introductory, and will deal with aspect scoring, the actual performance of CT perfusion imaging, and the application of software analytics. The second and third portions of the series will be case presentations with the second section being of ischemic events and the third section the CT perfusion appearance of non-ischemic pathologies. Let's proceed with aspect scoring. I'm sure you know that aspect scoring is applied to middle cerebral artery ischemic events and so those regions of the brain supplied by the middle cerebral artery are those under consideration here. Aspect scoring stands for the Alberta Stroke Program Early CT Score. It is a 10-point scale for MCA ischemia, with 10 being a normal score. Aspect scores of less than 8 predict a poor outcome. And this was actually one of VRAD's 2019 quality reporting metrics. I cite that simply to show how widespread the request for aspect scoring on all ischemia-related head CT reports has become. So the concept is simple. We have divided the brain into 10 sections, each of which scores one point for being normal. So we have six cortical regions, as indicated here, plus four involving the caudate head, internal capsule, lentiform nucleus, and the insular cortex. Those all together add up to the 10 points, and again, any region that is normal in appearance scores one point. So here is an actual case. You can see here is the dense middle cerebral artery. That does not count in this scoring system. We have cortical hypodensity in M1 and M2, so we only score a single point here in the M3 region. Next, M4 and M5 are clearly abnormal, and so we score only one point for the M6 region. Lastly, the caudate nucleus, internal capsule, lentiform nucleus, and insular cortex are all abnormal. So this patient scores a 2 out of 10, obviously predicting a very poor outcome. Important points to make that I think we've already touched on, but MCA distribution ischemia only. That is the only thing that counts in an aspect score. Now we are going to very quickly get to posterior circulation aspect scoring, which is a new version of the same system applied to different anatomy. Anytime you see hemorrhage, in the setting of ischemia, meaning hemorrhagic conversion of an ischemic insult, that should be counted as ischemia in aspect scoring. And again, a dense middle cerebral artery does not count. So just to reiterate, posterior circulation doesn't count in aspect scoring. This region of ischemia would count as a zero or a minus one. And this area of hemorrhage similarly counts against the patient uh, because the assumption is that there is underlying ischemia here. And lastly, again, the dense MCA does not count. All right, let's move to posterior circulation aspect scoring. This one, the pons, counts as 2. The brainstem counts as 2. And each of the cerebellar hemispheres count 1 each for a total of 2. So there in the posterior fossa, we have 6 of the points. This, of course, is to assess basilar artery occlusions. Next, we have the thalami, which count one each, and the occipital lobes, also one each. So there you have a total of 10 points, and these are accrued and scored in just the same fashion as a regular aspect score. You get a point for each one of these structures that is normal. So again, that's the pons, brainstem, cerebellar hemispheres, thalami, and occipital lobes. So the PC aspect scoring system, again, 10-point scale, with 10 being normal. 
An aspect score of less than eight predicts a poor outcome, but additional data suggests that scores of five to seven may also benefit from reperfusion therapies. Let's move on to CT perfusion. On the left, you'll see a typical CT perfusion scan, which is a rapidly repeated scan from the skull base to the tops of the ventricles that is done to identify the exact timing of arterial inflow and venous outflow. On the right, you'll see the designation screen where a red dot is placed on arterial inflow and a blue dot for venous outflow. Those are frequently abbreviated AIF for arterial inflow and VOF for venous outflow. It is the radiologist's job to identify those markers and determine that they are in fact placed on arterial and venous structures. Analysis of that data enables the creation of these color maps. Across the top, you'll see those entities, those series that best depict core infarcts. Those are the CBV or cerebral blood volume and the CBF, cerebral blood flow. Along the bottom, you'll see the typical series that depict ischemia, which are the Tmax and the MTT. Do keep an eye out for an additional series known as the TTP, or time to peak, which you'll often see performed in these CT perfusion studies as well. So what do these all stand for? Well, again, CBV is cerebral blood volume, CBF is cerebral blood flow, and those typically will depict core infarcts. The bottom row are series that demonstrate ischemic tissue, the Tmax being particularly tied to arterial inflow to capillary time, that particular uh, segment of time. The MTT, or mean transit time, corresponds to capillary transit time, and the TTP, or time to peak, uh, it reflects both of those entities. So what are they good for? Again, the CBV and the CBF are the best for infarct. The CBV is actually the best for visual assessment of an infarct, while the CBF is typically what is used for automated uh, calculations based on this data through the uh, analytic software that we'll be discussing. The CBF tends to overestimate the region of infarct as there is some crossover and it does display some ischemic tissue. The bottom row, Tmax, MTT, and TTP are all best to depict ischemic tissue. And it's the difference between the size of that infarct demonstrated in the top row and the region of ischemia in the bottom row that enables you to determine those patients with a penumbra of salvageable brain tissue. Here's a good example. This is a case of left frontal ischemia. You can see in the top center, the CBV shows no abnormality, while the CBF shows a very faint dark blue in that left frontal region. Across the bottom, you can see that there is a significantly larger wedge-shaped region of ischemic tissue. So remember, again, the CBV is best for the visualization of a core infarct. The CBF typically is used in automated calculations. The CBF is equal to the CBV divided by the MTT, that being the definition of uh, cerebral blood flow. So this is a nice example where I would be reluctant to call this a core infarct, given the normal appearance of the CBV and would essentially declare this to be all ischemic change in that left frontal region. Here's one where the changes in the top row match the changes in the bottom row. You can see the CBV is uh, depicting a significant left frontal infarct that essentially matches the CBF, the Tmax, and the MTT. So this is a large infarct with a relatively small, if not non-existent, penumbra. All right, 
Let's move on to analytics. This is a nice case showing, again, a core infarct, this time, though, with a large penumbra. You can see the region of infarct on the CBV and CBF, and a much larger penumbra here on the Tmax. The MTT is relatively unchanged. The MTT, in my experience, is probably the least sensitive of these ischemic series. Uh, lastly, you'll see in the bottom right, we have an actual map created uh, depicting the region of ischemic change superimposed on anatomic images so as to give you a better uh, assessment of the exact anatomic distribution of these ischemic changes. That's performed uh, by analytic software. So we'll look at that once again. We recognize the core infarct in the CBV and CBF, and a very large region of ischemic change on the Tmax that is again depicted on that uh, anatomic map. So let's look now at the analytic software. You can see in the top left the AIF and VOF locations. That again is where we check the placement of the red and blue markers to determine that they are in fact on arterial and venous structures. Next you'll see an actual time to contrast enhancement graph of both the arterial inflow and the venous outflow. Here you can see, according to various thresholds that have been set, a graphic quantification of the CBV. And as I mentioned earlier, the CBF typically is preferred for these automated calculations. The CBF is actually a comparison of percentage enhancement compared to the opposite normal side, while the CBV is an absolute value. Here you can see the mapping of the T max as well, again according to various thresholds. Note at the bottom here, hypoperfusion index. That is the volume of tissue with a T max greater than 10 seconds divided by the volume of tissue with a T max greater than 6 seconds. That hypoperfusion index tends to correlate with the speed of growth of the core infarct. So the higher that number is, the worse for the patient. A 0.3 or lower is associated with a good outcome. This one at 0.5 is obviously uh, headed for a poor outcome. And most normal studies you'll see at 0.1 or even lower. Here you can see we can superimpose the region of infarct and the region of ischemia and come up with a mismatch volume, that correlating to essentially the salvageable penumbra. And from that information, we can create a map on the anatomic images to show the regions at risk. Lastly, this software provides an analysis of patient motion throughout the study, so you can assess the accuracy of the study and these computations by making sure that the patient didn't move excessively in any one of the three axes. All right, let's look at another example. This one is a right frontal infarct. You can see the dense core infarct on the CBV and the CBF. However, when you look at the ischemic series, the Tmax and the MTT, there's a little crossover that suggests perhaps there is left frontal ischemia as well. This, of course, can happen with bilateral anterior cerebral artery occlusions, but it's at least a little suspect. So we'll want to go to the software analytics to determine whether that's a real finding. So again, we have the AIF and VOF indicators and our time versus enhancement graphs. And then we have a CBF plotted according to thresholds, which shows the core infarct in the right frontal region. And then our Tmax, which again is showing that crossover, that potential involvement of the left frontal region. You can see on the strip to the far right uh, that really only the right frontal region is involved on the CT images for this patient. But let's look now at the movement along the various axes 
it's quite dramatic. And again, here is a normal for comparison. And this patient moved quite a bit, and I think that is enough to force you to take all of this data with a grain of salt, and I think pretty confidently write off that left frontal ischemic change as motion artifact. Well, that concludes the first portion of our series. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for case presentations.